Hey guys, how are you doing today? Welcome to another sponsored Shadow Wars video. The next Shadow Wars expansion was just announced a couple of days ago, so the Starforged Legends will storm into the game at the end of September. That is still a bit away and because of that we will check out some more decks before I will give you an overview over the new cards later this month. For the start into September I decided to try out another aggressive Bloodcraft deck, an archetype that is one of the most straightforward ones that you will find in Shadow Wars, hence our strategy part will be a bit shorter than usual. Agro Bloodcraft is a part of the game since the beginning and has always been good for some decent win rates. The current builds are no different for that, allowing you to rank up super fast while still maintaining a good power level. Your strategy is narrowed down to one single idea push as much damage as possible in the shortest amount of time possible. You're looking forward to break your opponent's neck between turn 5 and 7 on average, which leads to a playtime of under 5 minutes most of the time. Try to keep up the tempo, play units on curve and go for a finishing blow on turn 6 with your storm units or the endgame tool Carabossa Wicked Fairy. Funny enough, one card found its way into Agro Bloodcraft since it's nerf and that is the buffer mate. He was changed recently, so instead of just giving you a high cost follower, he is now giving you a random Bloodcraft follower into the hand. That means for you that he will allow you to refill your hand, because you do not mind if you get some small followers into the hand as long as you can keep up the pressure. In any game where you are not able to finish your opponent fast enough, the Wicked Fairy is always at your side. Not only dealing one point of damage at the end of each of your turns, but also drawing you more extra cards. Your maximum play points are not increasing anymore after you have played her, but nonetheless it is not hindering you. The highest card that you are playing are 6 playpoint followers anyway, so even if you are staying at 6 for the rest of the game, you still have plenty of room to maneuver. If you are a fan of fast decks, the Echo Bloodcraft one is definitely the right way to go. Next up I will show you some of the super fast games I played today, definitely enough arguments for you to try out the deck. For any questions left, just comment below. Alright ladies and gentlemen, so here we start facing for the first game a Shadowcraft player. Um, start looks really really good, we have a decent decent curve, 1, 2, 3 drops and we are going second, which uh, normally means that if our opponent is also dropping something on turn 1 that he will um, push damage first. But we will see if he has some one drop here. Luckily he has not, so we can start with the Curseman Vampire. And got even more stuff that we can play on curve. Probably then a buffer mid into the Vampire Noble. It's a bit stronger maybe than the Angel of the World. Depending on the board situation. So if he has just a one attack unit, the Vampire Noble is definitely better. Uh, yeah, buffer mid is coming. Giving us a random Bloodcraft follower. Dark General, fine. Some storm damage, definitely good later. Pushing one point of damage. And the pact with the nether god. Well, the board is still empty and we got just so much more to draw. We will drop now the Vampire Noble. One in the face. And maybe on the next turn just double buff him it for more cards to draw. Filling our hand. And the more cards you have, the more options of course. Undying Resentment. Again, the Vampire Noble is down. Cannot do it. Uh, summon Bloodkin. No, that is one buff mate. We get Kara Boss. Great. Another buff mate. And the Vanya, which is also working decently with the Summon Bloodkin. We are now evolving the Curse Band Vampire, pushing three in our opponent's face. And I guess we will play the Wicked Fairy here as soon as possible. Normally, six play points should be enough for us. Fall Tempest. Well, we still keep one unit. Embling. Embling, embling. So how about just Vanya? We're going summon Bloodkin. Dealing two damage to the Vanya. We're dropping the Embling. We're dealing then another one point. We're just pushing another three into the face. So he's down to nine. And I think that's it. We're not using the evolution point here. If we use that on the Vampire, we would spawn another Forest Bat. But we have already a full board, so that's not helping us. That might be a super fast game here. So another full Tempest, another one point of damage, which still means we have three units here, packed with another god. There you go. So we have double, ooh, that is already enough. We would have played the Wicked Fairy, but that is already enough. We can evolve here if we like, do not really need that. Double Razory Claws for six in the face, just like that. And he's sitting there at three live and we can now just use whatever we like. So that was a fast game, turn six, victory.
Second game will be against Runecraft. Uh, Runecraft right now is a, in a very strong position, has a lot of good decks, good of matchups. Mm, going second again, we're dropping everything. Definitely want to play something on turn one. Also, the Wicked Fairy is definitely not a bad drop, but Cursement Vampire. Then again, nothing. Three, two, four. Hmm. That'll be too slow if we just can play the Curse Vampire over the next four turns. That would not be the victory. I can assure you of that. Alright, so there's more stuff to play then. The Ambling, eating the first point of damage in each phase. Then we're going Vampire Princess. And then hoping to find something else. I mean, as long as we can fill our gaps that we currently have between turn uh, 3 and 4, then we are really good. Will be a pretty pretty decent damn will be a pretty decent curve. Car boss, okay. Vampire Princess. He now has uh, the Actress Farrier here on the board, which is if he's evolving, he would buff all neutral units on the board by plus one plus one, and he's playing neutral deck. And neutral Runecraft is really strong. He's trading. Not taking any chances. Oh man. That would have been nice if we were just going face or killed the ambling or something. It would have been a very good prop up here with the Sun Bloodkin. Two forest beds would be an additional two damage on the face, so he's now down to 17. Our units are of course not strong enough to trade right now. But well. Oh wow. <laughs> okay, so we're seeing the Strix here. Which is now because apparently he has a lot of neutral cards on the deck. He's now uh, for 4 or 5 5, which is uh, pretty, pretty decent, you can say. Uh, we're dropping the buff on it. Getting the big Nuggle Bodyguard. Okay, so the 5 5 is definitely a bit too much, so I think we're just killing it. And then just pushing 3 into the face. And then on turn 5, um, either Scarlet or the big Nuggle Bodyguard. The one of those, depending on uh, what do we need to kill here. So with the Scarlet you can deal 2 damage, you have a Bane creature and you're restoring 2 defense to your leader. While the big Nuggle Bodyguard can kill an, an enemy with 3 or less defense and you're dealing 2 damage if Vengeance is not active. My blood is not done for. No crying, no looking back. And right now, I think the Scarlet is a better choice. Scarlet should be the better choice. So we're dealing two on this one. We can evolve, kill the 4-7. Then we still have Scarlet here on the board and we can deal another one point. Plus we are of course healing back to 15. So we can deal him another one point down to 13. On the next turn, maybe the Wicked Fairy is already dropping for the constant stream of extra damage. We are then cut out at 6 play points, but that should be fine. He is evolving the Hector, so the 1-2 is probably down. This one is still at 5, so yeah, definitely we're definitely going for the car boss. Wicked Fairy. We're now drawing a card at the end of our turn. We're dealing one extra damage at the end of our turn to our opponent. And we will stay for the rest of the game at 6 play points. We're gonna kill this one. Means the car boss is at 2 still, so the goblin is uh, too slow for that. He's drawing two cards. And now he needs to drop all spells, but I think he will not play too many spells. So he can play that without dropping then any card. Normally. Oh, he's just going face. Oh, that's already over. We can push eight, we can push three, and he's getting an additional one point. Though so it is already over. Another super fast game. Down to one life. He's getting one at the end of the turn, and with that, he's out. Last but not least, we have a Shadowcraft player and a starting hand with a Blood Wolf finally going first. The Blood Wolf will be our pick here and if we get a one drop that would be excellent. Please give me that. There we go. Curse Vampire into the Blood Wolf should be sufficient for the start. And also an Ambling, so Ambling is always preferred over a Curse Vampire. That is one extra point of damage and the Curse Vampire 
would even get a bit stronger later in the game if Vengeance is already active. Also then, in most cases, the game is already over anyway, either you are losing or you are winning. So it is now um, 17 to 16. Has not played the uh, one drop, which is good for us. That allows us to go more aggressive under Angry Sentiment. The Blood Wolf is down. And that sounds similar like the game that we played for the first time. So, one in the face, down to 15. Hopefully we get something to play on the next turn. Otherwise we would lose tempo. Oh, he's already conceding. Oh boy. Okay, after such a super fast third game, we definitely want to go for a fourth one. And we're going first against the Runecraft, Angel of the World, Vampire Noble. Um, I kinda want to get a two drop. So that's why we are dropping these. Um, Vampire Noble, Angel of the World are great three drops, but I want to have a two drop. I want to go as strong as possible. We just get the Razory Claw, which we could play on turn two, but it's not a unit that we can drop on the board. Nimplemsa is uh, not helping either. So, I mean, we are still playing the Razory Claw on two, that's for sure. But that's cutting out tempo. Mm, wow, just another Implanter. That is really not that great right now. Down to 17, he's at 15. I mean, the double Implanters are definitely helping to finish the job later. But if we're going too slow early, he might just overcome us. Then we have no chance to finish him. Magic Missile is dealing one damage, so we still have one to push. And ooh, there is, there is a 3 drop Angel of the World. One more damage, we can push. So he's down to 13. Without anything on the board right now. Can evolve on the next turn. But until then we should be able to push another... Yeah, we are, should be able to push another 3, so he's down to 10. Ah, going for snipes and only 2. Baphomet. I definitely prefer Baphomet right now over the Dark General. That's another um, Storm unit that we can play later, and we might find another 2 drop. So, going for the Baphomet, which is giving us. Oh, the Wicked Fairy. That's also totally good. Let's just push the damage in. He's down to 11. He's now most likely killing these two units. Yeah, that is Merlin. So, he's just killing the units both at a time. He's down to 11. And with the Merlin here, it looks like he's playing um, kind of a D-shift deck. With the Angel of the World, totally preferring that over going for the Dark General and then um, evolving. Because we, on the next turn, are probably playing um, the Wicked Fairy and then Implanter into Implanter. Because our opponent shouldn't be able to go as fast. Oh, Conjure Guardian, Fate's Hand. And there's a Conjure Guardian. Gives him a Guardian Golem, he's evolving that. So 5-5 five, five with Ward, we are still dropping the Wicked Fairy. And we can kill this unit, we are evolving the Wicked Fairy and he's getting 1 point of damage at the end of each turn. Big Nagel Bodyguard would also be nice, but well, it is the Wicked Fairy, for sure. So that sets him on a countdown. In uh, 11 turns he's down, but of course we will kill him before that. And if we would not be able to do that, he's just killing us with a D-Shift then. We get the Night Horde. So the thing now is that because we have double implants in the hand and we can still evolve one time, we are killing him in two turns. So he needs to defend against the Wicked Fairy, he needs to kill this one. But even then, we're in a good spot. So the only bad thing would be if he's able to drop the D-Shift that early, which is uh, not very likely. So he has not played too many spells. And that's under the assumption that he's playing the D-Shift. I mean, if he's playing Merlin, Fate Sand and so on, uh, there normally is D-Shift in the deck. And so far he has played, uh, well, let's see, he has played 3, 4, 5 spells or something and he has played Merlin. So the D-Shifts are still way off. Golem Assault. It looks like he's going for another Conjure Guardian. Oh, he's going for the Fire Embrace. Okay, no Conjure Guardian. There's the Vanya Vampire Princess. Uh, that allows us to also push damage on the next turn. We're going to Implanter. Then uh, pushing 5 into his face, so he's down to 5. Then he's going down to 4 at the end of the turn. We get another Vanya Vampire Princess. And he needs now to kill the Implanter. And because we have another Implanter in our hand, 
you can we will just crush him on the next turn if he's not dropping a guard alongside so he has one guard in his hand but then he still has a problem that he also needs to kill the implanter that is currently on the board there is a contra guardian so there is a ward 3-3 three, three. can evolve that makes it a 5-5 five, five, but even that is not big enough chimera okay now he can he's evolving the chimera Mm, that would mean that we are missing one point right now, unfortunately. Because we can go Vampire Princess, we can go Night Horde. Dealing two on this one, we're dealing two damage in the face. And he's getting one at the end of his turn. So he is then dying next turn. One turn later. Razor Claw, oh, that would have been better. The Razor Claw for the face would have been three and he would be down. But yeah, there is still a concede. We are winning this one through the Wicked Fairy. Decent stuff. And with that, we are 4-0.